Hey guys, intro, welcome back to the channel. So guys, these are a couple of things I do to keep organised with a disability. Guys, first thing, and I know I've talked about them on the channel before, haven't really been keeping up with it, but starting to make an effort, my food and exercise diary as well. And sometimes I put in things like my chores and my housework, because we kind of forget that any movement can be considered exercise. There's a difference between exercise and movement, but incidental movement can be considered exercise, especially if you're recovering from like a stroke or an epileptic seizure, anything to do with cognition. There's going to be limits on it, especially if you've gone from like a competition athlete to being very sedentary. That can be a flip the switch moment as well. Guys, the next thing is I use a physical diary. So I put down my community access times of the week, what I need to be doing. I'm also now studying some English online. Um, guys, not sponsored, but Alison has got a lot of the free courses as well. So I put that one in. So it's coming a bit cooler in my part of the world. So I've taken my summer doing off, which is just quite light. Um, I'm in the house that I'm in. We don't have a washing machine big enough to put it through. So Monday, I'm going to take it up to a laundromat and wash it out and put it in storage. Um... So I've got who I need to email, I'm planning out YouTube videos as well, and the biggest thing I'm finding, so I don't go back to the entitled, the whingy, addicted to the YouTube, is offline time, so planning things to look forward to. So guys, this is a really big thing for people with a disability who don't attend day community centres or structured support. Guys. Having something to look forward to is huge. Um, so that might be coffee with friends. And guys, something that I've had to learn is if that person's got kids and is married, have a bit of compassion if they're like, I've got to cancel, the kids are sick, or I've got to do X, Y, Z. If they're cancelling all the time, yeah, I might want to call them out on it. Fair enough. But having that bit of compassion, especially if you're not driving, Handing over some petrol money or taking public transport, huge. But having something to look forward to, if you're finding you don't have anything to look forward to, make something to look forward to. Challenging yourself. It might be a fun run. It might be fundraising. It might be studying your own YouTube or blog or podcast. Just finding something. It might be book talk, reading books and reviewing them. It might be craft as well and guys that's the thing um something that i've had to learn around safety with a disability and uh, resources is that my journey and my accomplishments none look different to everyone else's and that's not a bad thing so guys that's a huge one writing things down people often would say to me oh but what about using your phone? Guys, phone data for me when I'm out clear can be an issue. I've had, not recently, pre-COVID, I've had some pretty expensive phone and internet bills. So I'm a bit of a tight ass with data when I'm out and about. But I do put it in my phone with alarms as well. So that's the other one we need to think about is internet safety. Internet literacy and media literacy is such a challenge in the general population. So, guys, I know there's a lot of disabled creators who have physical disabilities who talk about media literacy. Go and check them out, guys. But that's the thing. But what about if they have a psychosocial disability? Well, first one, there's plenty of classes both online and offline. I know my local library does media literacy. I know my local library just straight up literacy classes. Definitely check out um, 
my local library has e-resources so you put your library card in and LinkedIn learning course or um, they come up with the paid versions of those um, through what we call our rates in Australia that's where you have access to that so guys I know on LinkedIn there's media literacy so the formats of all your mainstream platforms so Facebook, Reddit, YouTube, TikTok, what's appropriate. I do know that there's now some books designed for creators as well. But the general rule of thumb is even in an email, don't assume it's private. If you don't want it put on the internet, don't put it on there. Basically, I remember when I when the internet was first things come through when I was in year ten, guys, yes, I am a child of the dial up age. Um, we were taught that if you don't want whatever you put on Facebook or MySpace back in the day, if you didn't want that on the front page of the local newspaper, do not put it on the internet at all. But if you needed a safe place to vent, a diary was the best place for that as well. And so that's a really big thing as well. Now, on the flip side, you might have people who are very media literate and can teach you some things. And this is a big thing of the support workers is realise that sometimes you can learn from a client as well. Um, Guys, um, that's a big thing. Privacy is a huge thing around support and care work as well. So, guys, it's, there's sites that are fairly anonymous, particularly Reddit is one where a lot of support workers are gathering to get information and share stories. Absolutely love it as well. And they're talking about something but I'm going to do a video on support worker abuse and how to protect yourself. I know Deb and I are hard asses on support workers, but that's because there's a lot of young people who come in and don't realise that this is work and that it means hard work. It is physical, it's emotional, it is challenging as well. But I know in previous videos I've said that you guys don't deserve to be abused. So definitely respect the client's privacy, but make the TikTok, make the video, get the word out there as well. But the one thing I say is don't be a princess. Um, yes, you're not the maid of all work, but if someone's asking you to do a load of washing that they've put on and they physically can't reach above their head and they're asking you to hang it on the line. Guys, if you're in a cell house, if they're in SDA, if they're a hacks client, guys, every job I have seen besides in the day centre, every job I've seen for support work, direct support workers, community nursing, has said help with activities of daily living including household tasks as well. So that's a really good one to be aware of so you don't get pushed back on the internet as well. Next one, know where your passwords are. So for me, I change mine regularly, but I write them down. Um, guys, I'm doing a bit of life planning and the lawyer that I'm working for with my injuring power of attorney, my will and my future care plans has said to me, what do you want your electronic legacy to be? Do you want someone to just hit nuke on them? So uh, that's the other thing. Uh, do you want your Facebook, Reddit to be in memoriam? Do you want someone to completely delete your YouTube? Do you want to hand over control to someone else? All very real decisions that I have to make. Now, my next one is knowing your internet etiquette between platforms. Guys, definitely, particularly Twitter, Reddit, um, Facebook, 
their etiquette could not be more different as well. I know Tumblr, the etiquette's pretty loose, but um, they are pretty polite about showing you if you've breached etiquette over on Tumblr. But knowing the etiquette, knowing what's acceptable to post and not is huge as well. But guys, there are, let's be real and honest, especially some people with psychosocial disabilities should not have unfettered access to the internet. Let's be honest with it, with it, because they're more at risk of being scammed or catfished as well. So guys, this is where I would definitely recommend um, a formal internet safety one. Um, local library, definitely recommend check out your local library as well. But guys, on the flip side, you might have people who are very, very internet savvy who might even be able to code, know what Tor is, know what 8 is, know what 4 is. Guys, definitely check in on those guys. From my experience, they're generally going to be lower support needs, higher functioning. Um, that does not mean that they're no support needs. Uh, because they are lower support needs, they might actually get themselves into more trouble than someone who's just allowed to watch YouTube in an, of an afternoon with a support worker. So, guys, that one is challenging because they may not understand that the scams they're creating themselves, so they may not realise it's a scam they're creating or that they're catfishing as well. They might not understand that manipulating people, whether online or offline, is completely and utterly wrong. They might understand, not understand the consequences of having multiple dating profiles and ho essentially holding people hostage for like money or gifts or whatever it might be is wrong. They might not understand that cyberbullying is wrong as well. Um, they might not understand how to moderate searches and get on with discord mods or anything like that um discord guys i found some really safe and supportive places in the cryptography community so that's the code cracking community um with unpopular me circle um cicada 3301 Depending on who's on, Cicada can be a bit clicky, but guys, there's been people who've been around there since the original 4chan puzzle. Good on them. But once you say, hey, I've got a disability, guys, they'll teach you what GitHub is, what Code Academy is, what X is. Um, the, I know that there's even a section where they're helping people with coding homework. Good on them. Um, I know Merge Mansion Discord and the Y Files Discord, absolutely amazing places. But guys, Discord and Kids Messenger, absolutely amazing. And um, they're moderated communities. I know that there's the jokes about Discord and Reddit mods, but guys, at least they're doing something um, as well. So, but definitely some really basic tips is. If it looks too good to be true, it possibly is. Two-factor authentication. So, but if they don't have a smartphone, guys, set up a separate email address. That's the way that you can make it more accessible as well. Guys, um, if they just have streaming, make sure that safe search is on. Um, talk to their family, friends, caregiver, guardian what's mentally appropriate for them um so is that pg is that um pg 13 is that ma um what are they able to cope with and process without causing dramas for sleepovers with night terrors nightmares as well so guys and then keeping your passwords secure but if you need to recover them, having them written down somewhere. 
Guys, I thought that was the person behind me, but it's actually a bush that the gardeners have recently planted. Um, so definitely not someone behind me. Now, your next one, guys, is if you're choosing to run a live stream, definitely get uh, in a sill house or care house. Definitely get permission from the housing manager. Guys, have it in writing as well. And guys, if the person is buying things online, whether it be Facebook Marketplace, whether it be eBay, whether it be TikTok Shop, whether it be um, online sites, Kmart, Coles, whatever, make sure that there's a third party for your credit card as well. Um, I know that PayPal has recently sent out emails about their security policy and they always put your full name your customer id number and it's signed by someone that's not just dear customer and guys if the email looks wrong definitely check out the e-safety commissioner and scam watch see if there's any scams going around if it's from a bank that you don't know about ring the bank let them know let scam watch know guys as well and so that's teaching them about scams, about spoof emails as well is huge. Um, and sometimes, guys, treat them like a teenager. I know um, Office of the Year Safety Commissioner, especially since we've come up to Dolly Everett's 16th birthday, for my international viewers, Dolly Everett was a up and coming teen and she was a teen model who, because of distance, had to go away to boarding school. But she was relentlessly cyber bullied and actually self deleted because of that. And that's why Australia has what a lot of Americans are thinking is very authoritarian takedown notices for some media platforms. Um, guys, because of some of the takedown notices and stuff like that, we have actually prevented radicalization and terrorism attacks as well. Um, just a side note there to contextualize the Elon Musk stoush that's happening at the moment. Um, and John McBride being jailed, he is an Australian whistleblower over on the media channel. I will be doing something on that one as well but definitely check out friendly geordies because he's definitely across that more than i am as well and that leads me into definitely check out what they're watching and who they're watching and what rabbit holes they're going down with as well so do you really want someone who is vulnerable and angry listening to andrew tate or would you prefer them listening to Friendly Geordies, Dr. Jordan Peterson as well. So that's the thing, choosing what's appropriate for them as well and teaching them to question what they see and read online. So is it a hoax? Is it a deep fake? Is it AI as well? And guys, a really good thing for Facebook friends is if you can't verify who they are in your life, don't make friends with them. That's a really good tip. Um, guys, particularly if the person's on TikTok, makes TikToks, know how to use the block button. Guys, um, that is probably a really good one for mental health and safety as well. So guys, um, definitely internet literacy and even media literacy some resources that helps for your low support needs clients or just clients with physical disabilities who want to learn more. Guys, um, manufacturing consent, Rise of the Max Media. Um, checking out Russell Brand's uh, Rumble channel. He cross posts to YouTube, but he's often a lot more overt on Rumble. Um, Dr. Jordan Peterson's work as well. Um, and if you're wanting some alternative perspectives, um, 
Joe Rogan as well. Then, guys, there's a book that's getting a bit dated now, but I do know that they have a website now. Um, Manif- Norman Chomsky, Manufacturing Consent, The Rise of the Mass Media as well. And it goes into who owns what platforms and what biases they have and how to pick up biases as well. So, guys, I know I've rumbled rambled on for a lot but guys if you can like share subscribe comment guys we're up to 87 subscribers if you can help me to have a great christmas guys let's aim for 500 subscribers by christmas as well so guys i will see you guys in the next video